is playing on Smashville, so I would expect that means the Pikachu, and it yeah. does indeed. Yeah, for sure. It's got to be the Pikachu in this matchup if you're uh, willing to let it go to Smashville on game one, because that means you're ready to just go for those back air loops off the edge and make the Beaumont fight just go. Mm -hmm. And out of anybody that can actually dance around the projectiles to spike these platforms, Pikachu's going to be the one to do it out of his whole character pool. 55% real quick, and he almost gets the stock. I thought that it was going to be over when Yosifu missed that tether. Mm -hmm, but fortunately for Yosifu, was able to dodge all those aerials. Oh, the fair drag down. <laughs> he went for the ledge trump too, but just a little bit early. And, and a brave thing to do against the uppercut as well. But, mm. Still putting on so much damage, multiple opportunities now to end the stock even. We'll see why this is just such a... I, I talked about it before, I feel like it's a pretty bad matchup for the Belmont when the Pikachu's on point. Yeah. We've seen that here at the start of the game, but Yambi's going to have to keep it up for a while. At least sets her best to five, and that's going to give Yosifu plenty of time to adapt and figure out how the Pikachu moves, especially that Dambi plays a much slower game with the Pikachu. We saw a couple of situations where Yosifu left himself wide open throwing a projectile, and Dambi was nearby, but instead he opted to jump away and see what the idea was going to be following. Has Holy Water in hand just <laughs> drops it right down. <laughs> I just, I've never seen such a menacing Pikachu. This is fine. Oh, this is not fine for the Pikachu. No, it just waits for the drip to drop, but uh, didn't have enough invincibility to let it rock like that. In comes the whip. And oh, fire once again. We saw like there was three opportunities for Damien to take the stock pretty early on in the game, but Yosifu living through all of them was the one to take the first stock and the lead in the game. Mm -hmm. to take him off stage. His defense not getting edge guarded is so ridiculously good. I feel like I haven't hardly seen Yosifu get edge guarded at all today, and that's surprising considering that he has played against some characters that are good at edge guarding. But definitely. hey, even on stage, you got your weaknesses. I mean, Pikachu is definitely like the flagship character for the edge guarding, and we've seen him through so much already. I don't expect there to be. Uh a shortage of situations like that in the future as well. Mm -hmm. But I, you also have to expect, okay, when is the edge guarding actually going to come out? Because Danby hasn't been successful, and boy, has Yosifu been successful in locking him down. Yeah, even a character with as much mobility options as Pikachu has struggled to move around the stage pretty freely. Fantastic back air, though. Again, the tricky recoveries from Yosifu, though. I have never seen a Belmont move so elegantly off stage. Mm -hmm. Especially a Radicard like that. You, you, that's how you know these practiced, definitely feeling comfortable. Ooh, that air dodge was so big. A lot of people would panic and say, oh, I've got to set up for you know one of my recovery options. But he recognized in the heat of the moment right there, he's close enough to air dodge back and doesn't give Danby the time to get that back air. Anything less than he would be dead. And, and again, drifting just outside the range of the aerial. The Pikachu is bringing to the table and still with a long distance for him able to make it back to the stage. I mean, man, even though Danby hasn't gotten any big flashy kills off of his edge guards, you can see how much work it's done for him. He was able to rack up 100% virtually unanswered under his second stock simply by keeping Yosifu off stage. But now it's Yosifu going for those flashy plays that down or into the drag down there. And Danby again stuck at the ledge using quick attack to escape that situation. But I, I feel like, ooh, down tilt again, trying to set up a tech chase. That's, ooh, expecting the air dodge in, perhaps. I like that Yosifu's setups are turning us into Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, go for it down air, ooh. <laughs> Misa like this play. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, oh, Misa like, ooh. <laughs> dragged out into the, <laughs> into the uppercut. And that's a two stock for Yosifu, and, and it's not an easy matchup at all. I mean, that, la that last stock went by so quickly, too, mm -hmm. and I almost, I almost don't know, like, where it went so quickly because it's not like there were, again, a whole lot of that game was not super duper flashy. There were a mm -hmm. couple of moments, but it was mostly just clean 30, 40% at a time by, you know, four or five hits like you would expect to see in that. It was honest gameplay. Yeah. And Belmont's, I feel like sometimes that happens where it's not, it's not a combo. It's not even you being stuck at the ledge forever, but like one axe does hella damage. Mm -hmm. One, one whip does like what? 15 to somewhere in that range. So yeah. it, it's, it's it almost hurt. makes you feel like you can allow yourself to be hit by holy water. Yeah. Sometimes. sometimes. Almost. Yeah. I'm not saying you can. Yeah.
Sometimes you get lulled into that sense of security and then you need to a lot of game. Mm -hmm. So FD is definitely the pick I expected here. Wide stage for Pikachu to move around with no platforms to mess around. And just, just get the Belmont off stage and hopefully finish an edge guard. Oh, and Danby just stood there and let that holy water come down, put on the shield pressure, and Yosuku took big advantage of it. And you can see that the combo game just isn't quite there yet for Danby. Yosuku had enough time to air dodge out of those back air loops that I think should be guaranteed. And, but again, trying to connect these difficult to connect combos on Wi-Fi is not easy. Sometimes the, the inputs are just not 100%. Yeah, home, you know? that's true. Uh, Danby does get the Bowman off stage, but again, the quickness, the swift recoveries from Yosuke are really what has been helping him out so much that he actually hasn't had to deal with the edge guarding so much because he spends as little time off stage as possible. Yeah, and on stage, he's not been giving a lot of opportunities to Danby to reset those situations and keep trying. Ooh, back air does finally connect on that last hit. Danby's got another potential setup. This should be the big one, but again, he's just not quite dropping low enough to hit Yosifu before the aerials come. He's able to drift. Oh, there you go. go. Catching the jump back. It's going to be a stock on the Belmont. And what he did right there was he caught Yosifu getting a little bit, you know, fancy on his feet and trying to mix up the recovery when he didn't need to. Maybe he felt that Danby was going to make the adaptation, so he threw out the cross to cover the low drop, but instead Danby did what he's been doing the whole time, going out there as quickly as possible, but not so low that he can't actually follow up. And as I'm talking about that, boy, is Danby making some good changes. 71% real quick. Yeah, no no real pressure from Danby, so he's able Ooh, to find Oh my thunder. gosh! Look at that combo game. I mean, we might not need to see an edge guard at all. We just got raw damage. Oh, that's going to be back there. Set up an opportunity for Ledge Brecker here. Nobody speak out. He doesn't matter. Nobody speak. That sounds like a fake Dragon Ball name. Nobody speak. I got a cap. Oh, the jabs come out. Probably not actually what Yosifu wanted, but either way, still sets him up in a great position. Fourth throw at the ledge will do it for sure. Up B as well. That'll, that'll end up taking it, but still 118 on Yoshifu. You could definitely see like a near down smash setup or near up smash, something of that of that variety. One of the smash guys. I feel like Yosuke has also picked up on a little bit of the ledge game from Danby and that when he's stuck there, he's not going to go for the same option twice in a row. Of course, the ledge trumps something that Danby has labbed out a whole lot of, as we've seen today. Three separate sets, he's now gotten ledge trump back here to get the kill. So he does remain well in the lead, but that could go away if Yosuke continues to take advantage of the habits that Danby is showing on the ledge. That in particular, he just doesn't pick the same thing any two times in a row. We saw him do a tournament winner, and Yosuke was all but guaranteed that he would not do it again because he did smack him with the whip. And go and go into these up air ladders into the forward air, but not in a situation where he was able to continue that pressure into an edge guard because he had it at so high up. This he's going on the stock, but 72, not healthy. Up air bridge. I, I really, I think Danby has thrown more projectiles than Yosifu has this game. Honestly, like, oh! So that finally connected big Belmont whip. Might it be 100% too late? 100% too late. I mean, you might be right on that. Yeah, he is down 100%, and honestly, the way Danby's been playing, yeah, one of those ledge trumps could do it. That was a time for a back throw right there. Got a little greedy going for the aerial. That time he gets that setup, though. Belmont go off stage again. Just on the other side, wasn't able to turn around the bounce match fast enough. Ooh, Holy Water finds him an opportunity to get back on stage. Danby's going on full defensive right now. He knows that all he needs is one grab to finish this off. That's why I would recommend not going off stage. You really don't even need to do that anymore. Up throw should do it, oh, but he mashes greedy, greedy. too much. Yeah, I, I think they need to be able to do it. No, they should do it. Thick and he doesn't have like any rage. But... Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I was wrong. But he does end up catching him on the way back down with the forward air. Does seal it off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, finally able to get the kill off the ledge, but only after the up throw. Not a back throw, forward throw, anything like mm -hmm. that. Danby was able to keep it close and honestly keep it into his favor. Not having to worry about the Belmont escaping the platforms was so big for him in simplifying that game and giving him less to have to think about. Mm -hmm. For sure. Now, I'm I'm wondering what kind of stage we'll see out of Yostifu on the rebound. Because um, Smashville is certainly not going to be on the table anymore. I would mm -hmm. like, I, I'd imagine that'd be something that Danby would want to ban. 
Yeah, banning Smashville, banning I don't know, maybe probably not maybe, Yoshi's that probably makes that probably makes the, the holy water harder to use. I would say probably mm -hmm. like, yeah, Battlefield. That'd be what I would expect. Because even the, even if Pika's all right on that stage, you don't want to deal with Belmont Whips over mm -hmm. there. We're gonna be going back to PS2 here. Okay. Uh, we're going to. I don't actually PS2. remember where no. the game was. Yeah, so. we didn't start here. We started on Smashville. That's true. That's true. So, game three on to Pokemon Stadium 2. I think that, again, this is just going to be big time for Yosifu looking to give himself a place to escape from when the Pikachu is putting on pressure and especially let him get around the Thunder Jolts, which were such a bane to his... Oh my gosh, never mind! Danby's going to the Yoshi! Danby, Red, Yoshi, coming through. Okay. As he jumps right into the holy water. <laughs> Quick damage. Gonna use those eggs to try to maneuver around, but there we go. Finally finding his first hit in the match. I, I would be interested to see how well the Yoshi is gonna be able to bring the, the maneuverability to the table because this big air speed is crucial in avoiding a lot of these projectiles. Oh, I think Dambi got robbed on that up tilt missing. Yeah. I think this game needs to get its eyes checked. <laughs> I'm not gonna yeah. lie. Oh, oh my damage! That is insane damage. Nothing Robin about that. Oh my god! Speaking about Robin though, I think that Yosifu robbed that stock real quick. I love to see that from the Belmont, right? That aggressive edge guarding. Rather than just sitting on the stage, he noticed the time where Danby got rid of the double jump and he could actually do big damage. Here we go. Egg confirmed into the fair gets a little bit extra. Great timing there by Danby and catches him up there without the double jump. There is no recourse for a Belmont to get down at that point. Yoshi has four times the aerial drift, I think. Something like that. Yoshi having insane aerial drift and the big maneuverability of those eggs as a projectile really does help get around the cross, the axe, everything else. Stay away from those whips. Without tilt still coming through. You can't just jump on top of a Belmont, no matter what you want to try. And that up tilt is not only a pretty big hitbox, it's very lingering as well. Mm -hmm. Sticks around for a while. There's that up B out of shield. We've seen it a lot from Yosifu. And I think that especially now he's using it, you know, a lot more defensively, whereas before he was actually kind of using up B out of shield offensively as an anti -air. And this time it's if Danby does actually drift all the way to the Right. Oh, rolls back into that holy water, somehow avoids the setup forward tilt, puts him back at the ledge. Scary, scary spot to be at. Man, sometimes I'm looking at this and Yosifu sitting center stage, Gampy's under a platform, and I'm like, is Yosifu really at the advantage right here? Right. That time he certainly is. He drops that fire right on the Pokeball center. It's a big setup for him, but 171, it feels like he, like, that right there was the first time I feel like he hit Gampy hard, that whole stock. Right. <laughs> You know, it's just been little hits here and there, and sometimes that double jump armor kind of makes it look like less significant than it is. Ooh, up B to catch Danby trying to get greedy for center stage. Misses on that one. Putting himself up on that platform is a real problem against Danby. Like I said, against the Pikachu, you can escape as the Beaumont, but against the Yoshi, putting yourself on that platform is putting yourself in danger. Pulling out more of these eggs. That's definitely what I would like to see more of to try to pin down the Belmont, really. Which is, is a little bit backwards of what you would expect the, the game player to be mm -hmm. the Belmont. Just down there and right onto that platform. Gonna get caught by his own holy water there right there. So Yambi still gotta do a lot of work to take his first stock. Even at the high percents, most of his DI has been phenomenal in this time with the up smash. Finishes out a two stock. He says, get that Yoshi out of here. Yeah, he just looked way more comfortable dealing with the, even with the insane air mobility of Yoshi, just Yoshi trying to get anything started had to drift so far in that it just didn't seem like he had the same aerial pressure that he could come down with, like with a, like with a back air from Pikachu or forward air. Um, Yoshi seemed a little bit less safe pressure and constantly, as soon as he got on, uh, got on in Yoshi, in uh, Yoshifu's zone, he was just able to escape with out of shield option or catch him on the way in with like an up tilt. Yeah, the 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 anti air game in general from Yoshifu just stopping the Yoshi from utilizing all of that aerial drift, like you were saying, is a big big factor for him in that matchup, right? To be able to actually maneuver around the projectiles. Unfortunately. He spent so much time focusing on the projectiles that it was oftentimes just the whips hitting Danby for most of the mm -hmm. damage. And I'm thinking that we're going to Town and City here for game four. I would expect that the Yoshi does not come back. Certainly not the Kirby. I would want to see the Pikachu, though. Yeah. 
I, I'd be happy with the Pikachu. I wouldn't mind even seeing the Yoshi gun just to give it another shot. But I think the Pikachu is the right choice, uh, as it is. You know, Yoshi has always struggled with disjoints, and whether it be a sword or a whip, it's still just as difficult to deal with. The, in, in, the ter in terms of hitboxes, there is no difference between a sword and a whip. They are both just disjoints. Just big and no hurt, no hurt zones. <laughs> no touch of me. Forward tilt kind of panic go for the up special. Um, but now we're seeing like eggs couldn't really do this for you, where you just toss out the sea bolt. If it hits, fine. If it doesn't, fine. You just wait for the next opportunity. Going all the way across? Nope. There you go. Fake out. Pikachu does learn fake out, does it not? It does. Yeah. It does indeed. I mean, that's that's one of the things. I want to go back to the to the Thunder Jolt topic real quick versus the eggs because. A lot of people think about them pretty similarly, but in this game plan in particular, Gambi gets to be proactive with those Thunder Jolts, and he uses them to control the pace of the game. Whereas with Yoshi, you're using the eggs to stuff the Belmont. You're using it to stop him from throwing out his projectiles and playing his game, and that is not as counter to what Yoshifu does. Yoshifu stops you from playing the game, and so if you're just trying to stop him, you're not really accomplishing much, and that's why you can see Gambi having so much success pressing the advantage even when he goes off stage. Eventually, then, again, finds the Belmont off stage, but not Ooh! Really. Ooh, he does find a uh, punish on the jump in the way. I'm amazed that he found the Blast Zone, too. I know Town and City's small on the side, but that looked like he was going to live. Oh, I, I thought with the, with the way the Belmont was going to be nice, you're right, but... Mm -hmm. Even, yeah. even game. That's, that's, once again, small close Blast Zones. Now, Whip, once again, putting in so much work for Yosuke at that close range, right? I have not seen people use that Nair as much as he does to get big follow-ups, but he's very good at finding the moments where he can actually drag down with it. He doesn't quite find a grab. Maybe reaching for sense where down tilt can set up into a tech chase. Maybe oh. missing a punish right there. There's something about the way that Belmont moves where I think he's... His aerial drift is just like so much less than you would expect that you miss some punishes that you should be getting. Gambi doesn't miss that one right there though on the tech chase. Goes off stage way too early though and that gives Yosuke the chance to maneuver around and get that early tether. Dash Tech does get through the holy water pressure. That really gets him back over to the ledge but now he's back off stage. Such a quick tether on the way back on. And low profiling the whip as well after that quick attack. Just ducking down onto the ground. Danby, again, 113 is sort of the equivalent with his other characters to like maybe a maybe an 80%. As you can see, even with that confirm into the up smash, Town and City's got those tall ceilings, and he wasn't able to get the KO despite having a really nice setup. Yeah, to get the Belmont off stage, and once again going very low and letting Yosuke get that high tether, and this time getting caught by the whip, and out of nowhere seemingly Yosuke gets the lead. Yeah, it feels like. Denby's been chasing Yosifu all the way across the stage, left to right, back and forth, and eventually Yosifu finds his feet on the ground, connects one whip, and it's over. Mm. It's a war of attrition, this one. Very quickly getting off stage. He knows that once he sees Danby running to that ledge, it will oftentimes result in Trump. Maybe Danby needs to start taking advantage of that, stopping short and reading a roll in or something like that. Mm -hmm. Just punish whatever gets buffered. I'll throw should do it. Yeah, even on town? Not even on town! I I just severely, I I think that Mr. Belmont's a little bit thinner than he actually is. Yeah, he is uh, He is actually a chunky boy. He's he is not mad as, mad as not that mad, you know. 240 pounds of pure muscle. Yeah. Back air, not gonna kill all the way across the stage. Sets up an opportunity. Yeah, second yeah. quarter will do it. 55% on Dandy. That's the thing about Pikachu against the Belmonts. You're either going to kill him at 6 or 206. Yeah. And the difference is quite large in how many times you're going to have to win neutral. It does come down to the punish game specifically for Pikachu. Whereas again, Belmont, even if you're throwing out all these Thunder Jolts and dictating when he gets to throw out the whip, when he gets to use the cross and the Holy Water to control the stage like he does right there, you get to determine the tempo as the Pikachu. Oh, and the Nair drag down loop up air, bridge, but doesn't quite find another follow up. It's so hard to connect that full combo. Mm -hmm. Getting caught by that whip, Dambi's reaching his last legs. One solid holy water connection could mean a forward smash and an end of the set. 
one off trying to connect off the ledge. So hard to do even with the range that Belmont has That's connecting with the down tilt. Not quite. I I would have been shocked. I am not used to seeing that move just be the KO tool, but like to get me off the ledge tool. Ooh, fading around with the back air. Yosuku's able to punish, but not enough for a kill. Oh, the cross is not enough either. Look out for the axe. He didn't see it coming. He was turned the other way. And Yosifu, excellent coverage all the way through with those projectiles. Closing it out 3-1. Mm -hmm. Earning his comeback game against Zai now. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a rematch. The first one went to game five. You know that the second set is going to be a nail biter as well. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. that, that comes after such a... I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a grind against Danby as much as it was just, you know, it, it took grit rather than, you know, maybe the determination that you would associate with a, with a, with a longer set like he had against Zaya. It was just a whole lot of, all right, he's going to get some wins in neutral, and I got to accept that he's going to do some damage to me, but I just have to make sure I'm doing more. Yeah. It's, I mean, the, the whip was just so ever present, even when you get around the other projectiles. Like you said, I feel like there were times where it felt like Danby was throwing more projectiles in his Thunder Jolts than, uh, than Yosifu was, but the whip was ever present as a tool that covered so much space. Uh, super prevalent in the Yoshi game, but even against Pikachu, just covering, mm -hmm. covering him when he was trying to go for those aerials or as a way to deal with. Thunder's old pressure. Well, I mean, let's take a look. Like you said, uh, at this Red Bull replay here, spent so much time worrying about the whip because it ended up being so big in that game that the axe sort of came out of nowhere. You forgot that it was such a big tool in the arsenal that when you're on that top platform, you just think, okay, I've got a second to breathe, and then it's smashed.